What's up guys, Shane of Figure 3 d Printing, and today we're going to be working on my Anycubic i3 Mega by replacing the hot end. Welcome back guys. So I'm going to say right off the bat, I am having huge audio issues and this first bit of video was lost due to that. The second half I think is all good, but this part was definitely lost. So I'm re-recording a little bit here, so I'm sorry about that. But what I'm doing today is working on the Anycubic i3 Mega because the hot end went out on me. What happened was, is once I unboxed this, I was having a few layer skipping issues, figured out it was the fan underneath had actually come loose and was no longer blowing on the uh, heat sinks of the stepper drivers. So then I went ahead, did a print, worked okay, started another print, and then all of a sudden the filament just started pouring out of the nozzle like molten and it started to smoke. I was like, oh heck, turned it off and then turned it back on. Looking down at my display, I saw that the hot end was not reporting back the temperature. So the thermistor had went out. For some reason, the uh, thermal runaway was not enabled on this machine. So it was heating up quite hot and had went ahead and completely melted that PTFE tubing in there and which made it unusable. Also it's not reusable without a thermistor either way. I went online, bought a new one directly from Anycubic. Uh, you can get them on and then uh, like AliExpress, stuff like that. I got mine on Amazon just because it was a little bit cheaper. It wasn't cheaper, about the same price, but a little more expensive, but I got it much, much faster than waiting a month or 45 days to come from China. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through what you're gonna need for this and then we will get some zoom ups here, we'll replace it and go from there. So hang on one second. So what are you gonna need? Well, you're gonna need a hot end assembly. Now you can use any one you want. I bought this straight from uh, Anycubic because I wanted a direct replacement. The reason why that is such a big deal is because in the top of this extruder carriage, there is a small circuit board up there. And in that circuit board, there are some connectors. And those connectors happen to be very small JST connectors. They are not common in most things. Um, even in 3D printing, they are the 2.5 ones, the littler ones. So that is a reason why I went ahead and bought a direct replacement, just so that it would actually match up very well. Now, feeling it, it already feels like it is completely tightened down. Once I heat it up, I will confirm that the nozzle is tight, but again, it's a direct replacement. I uh, even has the PTFE tube there, which I, I guess I'm going to replace. I didn't really want to because the one that's there is fine, but they have this one zip tied, so it is in there nice and tight. It, I can't push any more, so it does feel like it is down all the way. I'm hoping that it's gonna all go out and uh, happen, you know, okay. Um, I'm rambling a little bit because this is gonna be kinda, I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna be able to film this. It's a little hard in the new space, but I'll zoom you guys in here. You can kinda see what there is, what we need to take apart in order to drop it out because there is a plate that holds this up. So I'll show you guys how to take all that apart and get this swapped out. And hopefully we get this thing printing again. So let's get a little closer and see what we need to do. All right, well, here's where the audio went to crap, so we're gonna go ahead and just do a little quick voice over here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is pull out this green connector because we don't wanna make sure we don't bend any pins, break any of the cables. Now, underneath of this is a circuit board. That's where the uh, cables are gonna plug into for your hot end, your thermistor, and your fans. So once that's out of the way, then you can choose to either pull out your PTFE tubing or not. Mine is uh, securely in there, so that is not going to be an option for me. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reach underneath and we're gonna pull out the thermistor and pull out the hot end. If you're not sure where these go, make sure that you look underneath, but they are clearly labeled for later so that you again know where they are. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and use a two and a half millimeter Allen head. We're gonna go ahead and pull out these four screws. Now these four screws hold in a retention plate that is a U-bracket. It basically pulls up on the hot end and gets it nice and snug in the uh, on the carriage there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pull the hot end out. Now for me, because I had printed a different uh, cooler on there, that's kind of a sh the little shroud that's on the, the cold end fan, it kind of got in the way a little bit. So I'm gonna have to wiggle this around a little bit to get it out. Yours might come out much easier if you're using the stock uh, cooling shroud that goes on the printer but again this one was a little difficult for me to get out I just got to get it past the part cooling fan 
down there as well and it'll come right out. All right, now here's a look at that bracket that goes in there. Again, those four screws go right into this. This is tapped and basically just goes right around the top of the hot end and just holds it right up in there. All right, now we're ready to put the new hot end in. So first thing we're gonna do is put the PTV tubing up through it. Now you can do this all separately, but I didn't feel like uh, taking it apart and whatnot. So I just left it on there. Also, there's a zip tie on there, so we're gonna leave that go. And then we're gonna go ahead and get that uh, Now we're gonna go ahead and get that U-shaped bracket. And it's gonna go right around the top of the hot end. There's a notch that's there that this fits right into, as you can see here, slides right on there. And that is what's going to be helping hold this up. And we're gonna to have to get it slid up in there and line the screws back up. Now, whenever you're putting this in, be mindful of the way that your heater block is facing for the cables, because it might be not going the way that you want them to. I prefer mine going out of you looking at the front over to the left, but again, it's different uh, choice for everyone on how they want to do it. So once that's up in there, you're going to get some screws and you're putting just put into the two corners first, just caddy corner from each other. That way you can kind of get it to actually bite and hold it up there. Then you can go ahead and do your finer adjustments and then put the rest of the screws in. All right now it's really a little hard because I can't really show this but I need to get these two cables here, the thermistor and the hot end, up here into the circuit board. So the best thing to do is just to roll this on its side and then look. Uh, so once you look under there, there is a T0, fan 0, and fan 1. So your thermistor is going to go into T0, and the heater, there's a heater uh, connector as well, a port for that, but it is bigger than the other ones, so it's much easier to know which one that goes into. Okay, so now that we have those connectors in down here, we're going to go ahead and bring around our green connector again and plug that back in. Be sure to push from each side evenly so not to bend any pins under there and to ensure a good connection because again, this is controlling your thermistor and your fans into my little support that I have here. Kind of just clips in there and then I'm gonna feed it through the zip ties again that are already on the cable chain here for the Bowden tube because there's no reason to waste zip ties. Come on. It's gonna go back into the extruder. And it's the same length, so there's no issues with that. Once we confirm that that is in there securely and that is in there securely, all we need to do now is uh, fire it up and see if magic smoke happens or if it works the way it should. All right, it's plugged in, powered on so far. No smoke, no nothing coming in. That's good to see. Now after it boots up here, let's take a look at the screen and it looks like the thermistor is reading, which is great. That means that we have good connections and hopefully this should work. Now we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go ahead and preheat the printer to PLA temps and see if we can actually get filament to pass through. All right, so we are at 190. And guess what? Filament is coming out. Awesome. I call that a success, assuming that this all stays the way it should and, and is working the way it should. But I'm gonna throw some test prints on here and uh, see if we can't get it working again because if it does, that'll be super awesome. That'll give me a fourth printer here to get things done. And that, I hope, helps you guys see how easy it is to swap out the extruder on here. This is by far one of my favorite machines. It prints beautifully, amazing layers. First layer's going great. The AnyCubic Ultra Base is awesome. Assuming you don't lose power, I know that's a problem for you guys out there. If you lose power all overnight, this will actually release your print. You can't resume it, even though the printer has auto resume. I understand it's a bad thing, but the base is awesome. So if you guys have one of these printers and you either need to replace this or you would like to have a spare on hand, I'll put a link down, a few links down below where you can pick up some of these. Again, these are, I think they're labeled official AnyCubic i3 Mega extruder replacements. So that makes it, you know, more better, I guess. So you know that it's semi-legit or mostly legit. 
Either way, I'll put some links down there if you guys want to pick them up. I definitely recommend having a spare. A spare comes with a machine. This was the spare. This was the spare. Um, I definitely, if you don't, if you already use that one, I would definitely pick up another one just because it's such a quick and easy thing and they're, they're like $12. They're very cheap. A little cheaper if you get Express though. I didn't feel like waiting, so I went the Amazon route for that. All right, if you guys found this video useful, if it helps you guys out, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, thumbs down and talk to me down below. Either way, how you guys enjoyed this video or didn't. That's a little loud there. So if you guys want to stay in tune what's going on, hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell icon. That way you get an email notification anytime I upload new content. You also get a push notification on your phones if you have that enabled. If you guys want to support me, best thing to do is become a patron down below. Donate me a dollar more. I appreciate it. And with that dollar, you guys get access to my after show. I share things on Patreon every now and again, but I'm making it a regular thing to do after every video I record. I do an after show and you guys can hop over to see that, learn a little bit more about myself and see what's going on behind the scenes. If you guys want to support me with like a one-time donation, Streamlabs, buy me coffee down there. I want to use my affiliate links. Those are down below as well. There's a little slice of what you guys buy. comes here to me. I appreciate that. And you know, check the other videos out. You know you want to. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, happy printing.